In this video, we're going to look at how to name molecular compounds. Um, and this is binary molecular because we're only going to look at two different elements. Um, what you'll notice is there is this chart of prefixes here. Um, these are prefixes that you'll have to memorize in order to name your molecular compounds. It's very straightforward as long as you memorize this list. One is mono, two di, three tri, four tetra, five penta, six hexa, seven hepta, eight octa, nine is nona, and ten is deca. Um, so if I look here, I see this is a molecular compound. Um, I know it's a molecular compound because it's made of, diff of um, two different nonmetals here, binary, two different um, nonmetals. Um, these, the smallest particle would um, be a molecule here as well. Um, so how do I name this? If I look at this, it's very straightforward. Phosphorus, that has a subscript of two. So all I would do is I'd go over to here and say, okay, there's two atoms, so phosphorus is going to get a prefix di. Very simple, so di phosphorus, and I keep the rest of the name there. There's no looking up charges as there is ionic, there's no switching anything, the prefix um, is given by the subscript. Okay, so my second element is oxygen, and it has a subscript of three. Three is tri, so it would be trioxygen. However, if it's the second element, what we're going to do is we're going to amend the name so that it ends in IDE. So molecular compounds are always going to end in I. So this is diphosphorus trioxide. Notice the first element keeps its name in its entirety. You may have a prefix there. And the second element is going to end in I. Um, another important note to make is that there's a rule where if your first element has a subscript of one, we can drop the mono. We don't need mono for the first element and only for the first element. Um, scientists think it might sound weird to start the name of a compound with mono. So for instance here, carbon has a subscript of one um, because even we don't have to write ones in, but it does. There's one atom there. So rather than saying monocarbon, we can just start the element um, start the compound name with carbon. So we can drop that mono on the first element only. However, if the second element has a subscript of one, we should keep the mono there. So this would be monoxide. Remember the second element, we make it end in IDE. Now what you notice here is I don't have two O's. I did drop one of the O's um, for monoxide. If you kept one in, it's really, it's not a huge deal. But with oxygen, because it starts with a vowel, um, a lot of times you can drop the O's or even the A's on the tetrapentahexa um, and um, just keep the oxygen there, the O there in, from oxygen. We'll see that in some next examples too. Um, so here you'll notice nitrogen pentoxide. We can go from the name to the formula too. The prefix will just tell me the subscript. Nitrogen does not have a prefix, so I could assume that it has a subscript of one. Oxygen has a prefix pent, and this is what I was talking about. They dropped the A and just wrote pentoxide. Um, but oxygen has a subscript that would be five because five goes with pent. So this would be NO5. There's nothing to switch. There's no charges to look up. The prefixes tell me the subscripts of those given elements. Very simple. And lastly, dicarbon. So carbon has a subscript of two. Tetrachloride. So chlorine has a subscript of four. Um, notice I'm not going to simplify this, so I know for ionic compounds you write what's called the formula unit, um, which is the simplest ratio of those elements. These are molecular compounds, so these would represent actual compounds that exist. Um, so essentially, I don't want these subscripts to be simplified. There would actually be two carbons there and four chlorines. Whereas in an ionic compound, in something like NaCl, there'd be millions and millions of Na ions and millions upon millions of Cl ions, uh, and we just represent the simplest ratio as NaCl. Okay, um, take a moment and try these examples. Uh, pause the video and then take a moment to check your work. Okay, so here we are naming these. This would be dinitrogen pentoxide. There's five oxygens, and notice I could drop the pentaoxide, but if you keep it in, that's fine. Okay, C3H8 would be tricarbon octahydride. This would be trinitrogen heptoxide or heptaoxide. This would be phosphorus pentabromide. Remember that if there's a subscript of one on the first element, we don't want a mono there. This would be carbon tetrabromide, phosphorus trihydride. And this would be nitrogen monoxide. Do keep the mono on the second element, but you can drop it on the first and should drop it on the first.
Feel free um, to practice going in the opposite direction. Diphosphorus hexoxide is P2O6. Do not simplify unless some problem explicitly asks you to. Dinitrogen tetra uh, tetrachloride N2Cl4. Sulfur trioxide SO3. Diphosphorus heptabromide is P2Br7. And dihydrogen monoxide is just water, H2O.